Hey, it's 7 o'clock. It is August 1st, and the first thing on the agenda is 81 Briggs Road, John Creedon, owner. And Mr. Creedon, I see you're here. Um, do you have a representative with you, Scott Morrison, or anything? Would Morrison, you like to? Send the paperwork in. Yep. Well, this has been going on a very long time. Um, can I have a paper from there? I spent an hour with this file this morning, and um, you initially applied in 2004, and I had everything written down, and where's my paper? Anyway, you initially applied in 2004. You had 10 different hearings, and you got to order conditions in 2005. There was a single paper that I had some dates written down on, but anyway. Um, and you were uh, supposed to put in a replication area. And um, I guess it was an issue with bounds, too. It's right on the line. And something about there was a bound that disappeared when you were doing the driveway or something. And then two surveyors surveyed it, and uh, they came up with different conclusions as to where the town line was. That was in the files. Um, in 2007, you had a, uh, you came back and you asked for a uh, revision of the replication area, and it was 1,250 square feet that was filled in, and the plan showed 2,000 feet for the replication area, and you wanted it cut back to 1,250, which the Conservation Commission agreed to. And um, I was here in 2007. I was not here in 2004 or 5. And I remember that the request for the certificate of compliance, but we denied it because you never did the replication area. So I was wondering on the status of that replication area. This is not my expertise. I mean, I had Scott, I had Michael Burke originally and Scott Morrison that had been out there numerous times. Um, we put in two bottomless culverts. Originally, it was supposed to be one, and then it was added to two. Uh, my driveway went from 40,000 to 80,000, but for that second, it was just um, because it was so long and with the two bottomless culverts. Um, and, you know, it was my understanding that they wanted me to cut down more trees to build a replication area, and I'm like. Well, in, the, in 2007, and it's in the file here, and, and here. Here are some pictures here. For, oh, here's my paper. Okay. Um, so it was revised in 2007. In, two th in 2010, uh, there's a note here that there was it was still in noncompliance because there was no replication done. Uh, and there's 1,240 feet of wetland fill. And so you asked to move the replication area to a different place so you wouldn't have to cut down so many trees. And um, so as far as we knew in 2010, the replication area was no, never done. And that's why these... I everything that I've been told from Marty Linda did the work originally. Um, I had Mike Burke as an engineer. I brought in Scott Morrison. You got and the right as far as I was told, I was hmm? done. You got the latest letter. Yep. It was. <clears throat> I sent it by email. So. Um. Building is not my forte. And and we like people to do the replica. I mean, to do the certificates of compliance because we have a backlog like this, and actually, you know, it's an enforceable thing that. Uh, if you haven't got the certificate of compliance. But as far as I can tell, the replication area was never done. So that is our problem that you never did the replication area. That's why we kind of require to have them done first now. My property is so thick with trees, and, I mean, you can't even see anything through anywhere. But the, the wetlands, you know, the, the, you put in 1,240 feet of fill. So what did you? Did you read the letter that it was emailed? Maybe I should read that one. 
I have it up on the screen as well. Okay. This is the letter that was created by Ecotech on June 18. And it, it's more or less a, a letter that says, no, the well and replication area was never built. However, the way things worked out, there was a replication area by serendipity because uh, if you go to this third paragraph, which reads, due to the fact that the impact area considered, consisted of eroded channels within the historic park path, two very large box <coughs> were installed to maintain the channels, a large section of the scoured section of the roadway to the north of the culverts, has revegetated with sprinkled alder, swamp beggar tick, and golden rods, which resulted in the increase of BBW. The project has resulted in a significant improvement over pre existing conditions consisting of eroded slash scoured channels. So, uh, what Ecotech is saying is say that no, they did not physically create a wetland replication area, but due to the site conditions over time, uh, Welland has increased in size naturally. Hopefully that's good enough. That's that's what I'm getting out of this letter. Thank you. It was, was recently, excuse me. <laughs> it was originally a town road, which I guess it was another complication uh, because then they had to figure out if it was discontinued or not. And in the order of conditions, they had to put in a thing stating that if any of the neighbors uh, were blocked from getting it, they had the right to go up one side of the road, and it was very complicated. Excuse me, Brent, you recently agree with what Ecotech is saying? I do, and it's based in my, my personal philosophy about disturbance of perfectly good upland forest to create a, a wetland. Yep. Um, Sure, that someone could argue the other way just as easily um, that the area wasn't done, so therefore, you know, no go. But the area in which the wetland replication area is proposed uh, is perfectly healthy upland oak forest with some large diameter oak trees that provide uh, difficult to replace <coughs> wildlife habitat. So my personal opinion uh, is that, based on this letter, if the wetland has already increased somewhere else, I'd rather save the forest to allow it. Does it still flood in that area? I'm sorry? Does it still flood in that area? What has never made it to the second culvert? There's somebody told me that they were supposed to do something with a the road there. The town. The town was. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway. The road was discontinued in 1949. I'm not talking about that road. I'm talking about Griggs Ritz. Road. The town's talking about putting a new drain pipe under the road. Nothing to do with it. The water never gets to the road. Because uh, it was also in the file about um, somebody having water coming down onto their property and ice in the road and so forth. So that's why I asked. That's never been an issue. Um, anyone from the audience? No. Okay. I don't like it, but I'm good about it. Mostly because of the ego tech letter. Bob? Or should I come back to you? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a long time. The ego tech is indicating who's an expert that uh, uh, they may have met the requirement. Adjustments made in 2007, where the original wetland replication area was changed as a result of. Uh, but then they never did that either. Well, I'm just saying that yeah. things have been constantly changing and, uh, and going around. And I think 2011 wasn't it moved down closer to the road and closer to the area that now is in. Uh, I don't know for sure. I I think you. I think it was. Well, his his pictures that were received in 2008, but it doesn't say where the replication area was supposed to be. Well, the word from, uh, I think yeah. it was Echo Tech in 2007 yeah. with uh, references. Bill John Sheehan uh, meeting with him, and, and I thought 
re relocating the wetlands at that point. But then it was never done. Any comments? I was going to say it wasn't done, but the letter saying it happened naturally. Mm -hmm. So I prefer not to cut the forest down. Would have been nice if it was done in 02 or 03 or whenever it was permitted, but. I, I grew up before they built those houses, three, three, three houses down from that house. And uh, years ago, when you get a heavy rain, that <clears throat> right away driveway, whatever, used to wash right onto the road, right into Ramps Horn. So there's been a huge improvement there, uh, which I think would count for something. But do we know the square footage of the what has turned into wetland? Is it, sim is it similar in size to that 1250 number? Uh, <clears throat> I spent a lot of time in that woods when I was a kid. Where your house is now. <laughs> I think we have video of that. <laughs> <laughs> don't share it, please. <laughs> we, do not, we do not. They don't give that number. They don't give that they number. They just say it's a significant improvement and that in the area has more or less become a wetland that was presumed to be upland before. And this is a company that's been involved with this, I guess, since the very beginning. So they know more about it than I do. Yeah, I have no problem. Is this for a certificate of compliance tonight? Right? Yes. Let me make a motion to issue a certificate of compliance for 81 Griggs Road. We could do something else first. Public hearing still open? No, no. it's not a public oh, hearing. Sorry, wrong again. <laughs> Second Bill's motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. You're opposed. Well, I don't think it's fair that, you know, they never did it and, you know, it's not, it's not and everybody. Situation. Yeah. No. It's I not agree, a, it's not the common situation. So you, no. So you're fine. Okay, do we need to sign that? Yeah, there should be a sign page. Oh, yeah, the it is. Yeah. And this okay. should be recorded too, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So, Mr. Mr. Freedom, once we sign it, Wanda will have all the paperwork for you, and then you'll have to record it. Uh -huh. So, just so it closes it out for you and us and everybody. Because that'll release the lien on your property. It's going to take a week or two. Within yeah. a couple weeks. Okay. Have a good night. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm looking at the wrong thing. You need your agenda. Anybody that tries to read it, <laughs> <laughs> including you. Uh, I think it's improved tremendously. You do? Started on the board. Can you really see an A and a D? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. One of this goes with that one. Okay, I'm going to recuse myself from this one. You, Andy. You're up, Andy. I'm up. So it's not going to read. Oh, you, it's you not going to read. Just read. Department just say it's a project update. All right. Uh, this is 705, right? Yes. Uh, 705 is a project update for 224 Manchog Road, Jessica Britnell for a shed move. Yes. Hi. Hi. I'm speaking to her here. Fine. You? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, you're good. I'm Jessica Britnell from 224 Manchog Road, Sutton, mm -hmm. Mass. Um, uh, thank you for having me. Um, my update is that we moved in last July and um, we have complied with all of the uh, requirements from the conservation. Um, and we've moved in, we've been living there about a year. We stabilized the land as you requested. Um, they're all, the trees are doubling, if not tripling. We water them weekly. I think we have one that's not doing great, but um, it'll be replaced if it dies, but it's still doing okay when we had to re um, replace some of the trees. Um, and um, now that we've been living there, it's um, 
increasingly difficult to get to the water because we're about two, 220 feet from the water. Um, and you all, um, we're really grateful that you um, approved a shed for us um, so that we can have a structure to put our um, towels and pool toys and floats and all those things. Um, and as we're at that phase now to build it, um, we own about 250 feet on the water and we have a section of clearing of UCAR about 10 feet or so. Um, and we, my understanding of the, from the plans was that the, um, it's when I look at the plans, it looks like it's to the left of the corridor. Um, but it, as we put it there, uh, there are several reasons that we, we were hoping to move it laterally to the side about 10 to 15 feet. Um, the, just, yes. Feel free to use that, that uh, graph oh, yeah, right sure. there. Um, so, the path, so the path comes down and then um, the shed is here. So this is the only clearing that we actually have here. Um, and then the rest of it is all woods. And we're hoping to move the shed this way. Um, just about 10 to 15 feet and for several reasons. One is this is a really steep hill, it's a slope, so it's going to be really challenging for us to put a structure on a, a really <coughs> steep hill. Um, and then in addition to that, the path, the way that it's turning out, it's kind of more straight. So um, this would be closed off, so we would have to go in this, and this is very wet, and around, or here, and then there's multiple trees here. So we were hoping to move the shed slightly over to the side uh, so that we can walk down the path and then have the shed just here. This is uh, farther away from the wetlands and it has less of an impact, I think, on the land. I'm not a, you know, a conservation committee member by any means, but um, this is already flat and um, so we don't have to do anything and it's already cleared of trees. I think there's one small rock I can show you a picture of. So we were hoping to move it to the side now that we're living there and it's not functional to put it right there because we'd have to be walking kind of around it. Um, all of the time and it would be much more difficult for us to put it on that um, incline given the topography versus moving it here which is already flat and cleared. So that was all the things that we're hoping and we thought that it would be better because it was farther away from the wetlands and it had the least impact on the land given the topography um, and it, made just, it just makes more sense when you go to the land for what we are trying to do so we thought that it would be better for the um, better for the structure, for the shed, and better for um, the actual land. So we're, that's, that's what I was hoping to do. Brandon? And I have a picture of the clearing if you want to see that too. The edge of the existing opening area is right, right here. That's, that's the, the southern end of the view corridor. Right here. So you'd be asking to go into the woods, which is outside of your a lot of corridor to, to work with. Yep, and there's no trees that are there, it's just a flat area. Um, because if I were to put it here, we're gonna have to go, this is very uh, swampy, so it'd be difficult for us to, to do that here. And here there are trees like all above, all around here. So we are kind of weaving in and out of trees to go, um, which is hard. Yeah, so we're hoping could. to move it to the flat spot that's already cleared with no trees. It's already cleared, there's no trees. Yeah, and I have a picture of it so you can see it too. There's a small stone there, but that's it. I, I could see the area, well, it's steep there, and especially yeah. in the fall you can see it better, not as much now. I personally think it's a better spot moving it where you want to move it than where it is now. Yeah, it makes sense. I don't know how to put a structure on a hill like that, really. But not easily. No. You'd have to cut in on the high end and put cinder blocks on the lower yeah. end, I suppose. Or just cut and fill. Or yeah, when we asked them, it was sounded a lot harder than just putting what we what we were granted, um, which was just the um, you guys that said we you wanted the foundation on sauna tubes, um, so that would be much more difficult. They wanted us to put uh, almost to flatten it to put rocks, and it sounded like grading, which I didn't think I was supposed to be doing. So we were pretty confused on how we were going to put a structure there because of the slope, but, uh, and I can show you the picture of the clearing, too. How far off the lot line is the shed going to be at its closest point? Um, my neighbor would be building it, so we knew that whatever, I, I, I know that he would do it to code um, with okay. the town and the state. So I think the zoning board has like a 20-foot setback or something. Oh, more than that. Is it? 
yeah, whatever it is yeah. from the I would line. make sure you're within. Yeah, sure. His is abutting that, so you can see it here, man. Yeah. Um, so his is abutting here, so whatever his is, we, we planned on doing the same. So that's the clearing. That rock there would have to be moved, but um, as you can see, there's no trees or shrubs or sure. anything that's clear. Oh, it says here there's these placed on sod tubes. Yep. It's wide open. Anyone in the audience have any comments on this? This is when you pull the troops. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine with it. I'm okay. It's also additional clearing. I, I, what's your problem? Do we want a motion on this for the... Might as well. Is it a minor field change? It's up to you. Well, There's maybe? two choices. My, minor field change or this is significant enough to require an amendment to the order conditions which would require another uh, meeting, notice illegal ad in the newspaper, and re-notifying all the neighbors that you're going to be speaking about. Make a motion to make a minor field change for a shed for 224 Manchester Road. And how far are we minor field changing it to? How many feet Up are we going to Up to 15 move? feet? Yeah, Is like, that? Yeah, I think I measured 15 feet. Okay, up to 15 feet. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. minutes to make up choice. All right, okay. <laughs> Ten minutes to make up? No, because they canceled, so we have to wait till 7.30. No, so 7.15. Yeah, 7.15. 68 minutes. Well, minutes. Read it in. Okay, the next agenda item is 68 Wilderness. The Sutton Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, August 1st, 2018 at 7.15 at the Sutton Town Hall, 4 Oxford Road, Sutton, Mass. The purpose of this hearing is to review a request for determination of applicability submitted to the Conservation Commission by Brenda O'Brien, Shrewsbury, Mass. The project consists of rebuilding deteriorated stone wall along the lake shore on Map 16, Parcels 8, on 68 Wilderness Drive, Sutton, Mass. This notice is publicized in accordance with the provisions of General Law Chapter 131, Section 40, commonly known as the Wetlands Protection Act and the Sutlin Sutton Wetlands Protection Bylaw. Uh, would you like to come up and explain? Yes, I'm Brenda O'Brien, 68, Wilderness Drive. We want to um, repair the stone wall that goes in front of Lake Singletary. It's all like I, I also have it up on the screen. Okay, it's it's all deteriorating, right, like right in there. And what happens is the water, because it's higher now than it used to be, washes onto the grass and it's all wet. Like you can't even walk on it. You go up to your ankles in mud. It just penetrates so the wall. We want to make it equal to next door at 66 Wilderness. There wall is higher. You can't, I don't know if you can really see it in this one. But That's we right. want to make it 16 inches higher in front of us so it's equal to 66 Wilderness Drive's stone wall. So then we can use this land. It won't be all muddy and wet. And it, it never used to be like that, but probably from like 15, 15 10, 15 years ago, it just started getting all muddy because the water, even the waves go over it now and go into the grass. So we can't use it, you can't even walk on it. It's all like weedy now and... You're creating a wet, it's creating a wetlands? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're just looking for a permit to raise it up, like it's about 16 yeah, inches that. from here over to here. It would be raised. This is 66, and this is where their wall is. Yeah. So it would, be, it would make it equal to this all the way over uh -huh. to and this, and this, end is and this end is already that height. So just raise up the middle part. Yeah, middle part. Yeah, we should. Over here. Yeah, but then you're going to fill in the land. Then you're going to fill the land behind it with dirt. 
Yeah, it's got to be higher, otherwise it's just going to... But if you jump on the land now, you can see it push out into the water. You can see it splash. That's how much, you know, it's just all... The whole wall is just deteriorating. We talked to um, Jim Bankston, and I guess he said we can't, we can't do it until the lake is drained anyway, like in October. So it wouldn't be done until then. And that's, I think that's about it. It's just raising it up 16 inches and fixing the wall so the water doesn't push through. How far through. back you're going to have to raise the grade of the dirt to do what you want to do? Maybe from here up to here. This is like a hill right here. So it would be from here up to here, which is probably 15 feet. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. I know you're probably with her, but could you state your name? Oh, sorry. I'm Jim <laughs> That's my husband. <laughs> Brandon? Okay. Just a couple things. Mm -hmm. um, let's, can you take that first one off? So you can see the back. Yeah. So there's a previous... Uh, Order of conditions for this property. I believe it was uh, Bacon and Yerka did this like a year or two ago. It's now all built. Um, that's not their house. That's Mike. No, no, that's Mike Dunn's old house. Uh, right, right, that's there. 66 Wilderness. Yes, that's we are like we're right behind the stone wall. That's right. Yeah. So <clears throat> just in front of that that gazebo, there's some plantings. In there. Oh yeah, we've there was part of the mitigation yeah, we for the project. Yeah. Winterberry right. berry bushes, and then there's a tree right here. Right. So you, exactly. So winter berry bush or blue, high bush blueberry, and then that tree. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to raise it up, <coughs> how are those going to be impacted? Will you would you be raising those up too? Or are you going to be that burying them? That would be the plan. Yeah. The tree. We're trying to figure out what's the best way to handle that. Hmm. To have these down rooted is actually. Surprised as well how swampy it is in there, but you see. Yeah, that was a birch, wasn't it? Some kind of a black birch. Black birch. birch. They prefer it dry. Yeah, it's it's I, I'm surprised it's alive because <laughs> it's all. Okay. Well, that, that's that's the first issue. The second issue is this this pink blob, right? <clears throat> so this is your property right here, outlined in blue. Okay, and this is the FEMA 100-year flood zone map. Okay. So you want to fill in that area. You want to bring it up how many inches? 16, you said? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you want to fill it in, level it out behind it, which means that you're going to be filling floodplain. Okay? Not that what much. Is, what do you mean by floodplain? What is that for? When um, you, I just don't know. <laughs> the, the concept behind filling floodplain is that in a 100-year storm, are you familiar with what the 100-year the storm is? Have you ever heard, ever heard of that? Yeah, well, at any, in any given year, you have a 1% chance of the, the big one hitting, right? When the big one hits, water levels go way up, and it causes flooding. And they have these laws protected under the Wetlands Protection Act against filling a floodplain because when you fill your land, that means there's less water able to fill an area, so now the water goes off to other places, namely your neighbor's land, and it floods them worse because <coughs> you just displaced all the water on your property. Okay? But not if it's from the lake, right? I mean, that's well, coming yeah, from the, the lake. Yeah, well, the lake floods because right. <laughs> all the water goes into yeah, the lake. It's not affecting someone next door that way, right? Well, this is what we, we're here to determine. Okay? This is a very small incursion overall. And it's also yeah. matching from like 66 is height. Two different yeah. discussions. <laughs> yeah, to do, right. I, I remember. So what kind of I remember when that came in. No way, he was very contentious. Yeah. Uh, so, anyway, you want? I can see where it goes up. Can you? Can, right here. Yeah, right there. Can yes. I show that yeah. to, to the that's, commission? That's their land. Yeah. Right, but you up want it to be here. about even with that. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. It doesn't have everybody see that? I'm I mean, I'm a little confused as to where their pro their property is on the right. Oh, yeah, right. Just, uh, yeah, it, it looks like it's part of there, but it's not theirs. That's their gazebo. Yeah. This is our land yeah. here. This the brown way the spot picture is. With, 
the angle. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. just the angle. The, way, the angle of it. There's only picture I could get where you could actually see right. that step. Our land is like right here. That's the gazebo. And so the bushes were from you, on your That's property? All, these, no, these bushes are on theirs. The only bushes yeah. that we planted. These are on ours. Those bushes. are the winterberry bushes that we mm -hmm. planted yeah. there. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, so. That's why the other picture we had here is a better portion. This is kind of. So, so the, the procedure the, the, the commission has used in the past for fulfill a, a floodplain where it's not a significant amount of floodplain, they've required that you hire a civil engineer to do a floodplain displacement calculation and get a statement from the engineer stating whether or not they feel that it's going to result in a significant increase in uh, uh, flooding as a result of, of the filling that you want to do on other people's land. My, from what I see here, it's, I can almost guarantee that the engineer is going to end up with a, a finding of no significant impact. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it's, it's, it's the, the prerogative of the commissions to require that if they want or not. Because in here, this whole law does dip in, so the bill is really all over. Right, so you, you'll yeah, be raising that up, yeah. putting in dirt, somehow raising yeah. the plants up. I guess you're going to have to take them out and transplant them and leave them off. Yeah. Uh, it's really, that's not an issue for me. I mean, that can be done easily. Yeah. Uh, it's the issue of the floodplain uh, displacement. And, and it's up to you whether or not, to the commission, whether or not they want a, a study and statement from an engineer or if they feel comfortable uh, allowing it as is. I mean, it never did it before. Like 10, 15 years ago, it was never like that. It was always dry. But now the way, even the, the water is really high now. What, why is the, the waves water do higher? Go over. I mean, we have a, there's a dam with flashboards. I why is no it higher idea. than it ever was? It's been a lot of years. It's where never it been this high than that I remember years. ever. Are yeah. the flashboards just being managed differently? You know? How long have you been there? Since 1982. Oh, it's quite a while then. Yeah. Because I know. Yes, we're high, but this more consistently. It's very high right now. Yeah. Yeah, the lake is high now. It's just. There's been other years where it's actually almost at the base of the wall. Yeah, because they had it very low a couple of years ago because they were repairing stuff. But. Well, no matter. They would have to repair, or not more than likely, going to have to repair at some point anyway. And if they didn't, they'd be keeping asking for the same level, about 16 inches plus or minus different. I personally don't have a problem with raising it because I think every case has to be made. And, and this is, if they don't, I'm afraid they're going to be in the same situation in four or five years, or maybe a little bit longer where the wall is going to be in trouble again. So as long as the tree can live, or if it doesn't, replant, replant the tree and the same thing with the bushes. And No, we want those there, yeah. <laughs> and the, the other question, too, is whether or not, because this came in as an RDA. So are you comfortable approving it as a uh, negative determination, or do you think it's there's enough going on here that you'd like a uh, notice from that? Okay. Fine with the RDA, because everyone on the lake is going to be watching them do that. And Jimmy Bankson has a very good reputation for doing them, so yeah, he was I, I don't worry about any fast ones being pulled because if we don't see it someone on the lake's going to see it and call us anyway so you mean they'll see that deterioration <laughs> oh, no, no that as work. soon as you see start doing the work work. someone's oh, going to call us so yeah i'm fine with that do, do you think that uh, an engineering study is necessary i don't think so personally i don't um, um do you think there's enough detail <coughs> here on, on their, in their submission to show exactly where the, uh, the dirt is going to go and the material? I think we probably have to reference the, the abutting wall as the to not exceed height or something like that, Bob, I think. Uh, we, can, we can condition, do a negative determination and condition it to specific heights for the wall and then maybe they could come back and give pictures and a description after it's done. Well, like I said, on these RDAs, I'm, nowadays I'm recommending a uh, project completion inspection. Hmm. I 
guess my concern is, if I understand what you're saying, your intent is to rebuild the entire wall from scratch. Somehow you want to, well, you, you said you're going to yeah, rebuild the wall down. so the water doesn't penetrate the wall. Oh, yeah. I don't know how you do that without rebuilding the wall. Yeah. I don't know how you're going to prevent the water from penetrating the wall. Uh, well, the head's got to be a solid wall, Joe. So cemented in water. We're going to try to use as much of the existing, he said, that was there already. And use those rods and use whatever was there. That's what this is. So, okay, so just to get an idea, is it going to be still be a field stone retaining wall? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or are you going to have oh, like yes. cement on the back with a uh, you mm -hmm. know, the stone fascia? What, what I'd like to see, that I don't know. just to cut you off. <laughs> Anytime, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> is that what I'd like to see is that before we decide what we're going to do, but that you get a letter from Bankston uh, describing exactly how he intends to build the wall and to what height he intends to build the wall, whether it's a masonry wall, whether it's a dry laid wall, uh, and so forth. I mean, uh, the only thing with that is, he said he can't really do that to it. He sees the wall when the water is gone. So that means that's not to him. So can do that. You, can, you can wait because yeah, can this is good do. for, what, a year? But Following the idea? Three, three, three years? But like, is he going to be able to work if he decides to do it, like in November or whatever? No, you'd have to. We, if we got a letter from him describing it, then we you come back here and we decide whether you could do it or not. We, just we, want, we want more details. Yeah, just what the end product is. All he told us when he talked to him is it'd be a solid wall made from the stone. How he makes it solid, yes, it would be cement yeah. together well, to make that, it solid. That's what, that's that's what, what I would like to yeah. see that's so that we understand solid. what you know, the finished product is going to look like and how he's going to do it. Uh, and then you'd know more about how much fill you would need and all well, of those details. Bit, but I mean, it's more how is he, how's he building a wall Drains going through the wall? Is he going to have a drain behind the wall? Because you're going to still have water coming down right. that wants to go through the wall. Uh, right. And you say write a letter, but would you appreciate a sketch to go along with it? Yeah. I mean, well, whatever it takes to describe from him what, what <coughs> he thinks you know, he's going to do. I mean, it, it's not a, a drawing, an engineer drawing, so much as. Just to, yeah. you know, like a cross section. Probably. A cross section would be perfect. And the uh, and you know, at the same time on that, she is always doing it, it would be nice if we referenced some elevation somehow. As you know, it's fine to say that we want to raise the wall, are you gonna raise the whole wall eighteen inches, or are we really going from point A to point B and drawing it, pulling a string and that's what we're going to. Uh, again, we're not opposed to, or at least I'm not opposed to having you do this. I'm not trying to make it difficult for you. Uh, I just feel that we have to know what you're doing before we say go ahead and do it. And by saying I want to rebuild my wall, and you don't know what you're going, what that entails, uh, and I want to raise it up, uh, you know, it's, it's a little loose. And you've already talked to the contractor that's going to do the job, and I agree with Billy. He's, he's a competent individual. So he's got a pretty good idea what he's going to do, but we just need to know something that so we collectively can hold him accountable to do what he says. So then, once we have that, we'll be presenting the next back again. Okay, yep. so th this is yeah. no, not in two weeks. He it's can't. The letter. They can't do the letter till after the lake goes down and he sees what he's going to no, do. No, he knows what. No, 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 I think, I think he said he couldn't give us a full price. To he knows what he's going to do. He knows what he's going to do to rebuild the wall. Okay, then if he can do the letter and you never, you never know what you're going to find once you start digging. Yeah. 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 He, he also <coughs> did that wall. Yeah. Well, would it make more sense to have him wait to come back in the fall after he's seen it? Oh, that's right. So he knows what. No, you can't see it until he rips it down. You can't rip it down until we approve it, right. technically. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just as a refresher on this, Brandon, yeah. can we clarify? what needs a permit and what doesn't need a permit on a lake retaining wall? What doesn't need a, a, a permit is an in-kind repair or replacement. Right. Somebody this asked me online about a repair, yeah, re and I said he called Wanda. So in-kind means you're replacing it in the same location, the same size, you're not increasing anything, you're just fixing it up. 
or replacing it right, in the same footprint. This one requires a permit because they're asking to uh, elevate and then fill, so it's an expansion. So that if they weren't elevating or filling, they wouldn't need to be here, correct? They probably would have left. No, they'd still have to be here. Yes, but... Because they're working on the lakefront, and we'd have to be notified and give them a negative argument. But an in-kind repair is usually... Well, when I came in for mine, because I mine had toppled over, I was told I did not have to come before the board because it was repairing the same. I, I agree with Is that why you had the excavator with a hammer and wood? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't think we need anything really fancy from Jimmy either. Just a, a description, right? Are we in agreement? A description of what he's going to do. Pencil drawing and a description or whatever? Yep. Yeah, and, and it, the points we're going to tie it together for elevations in, in on two, either side. So when do we want this letter? When does he need Whenever to look? They get it. Whenever they get it. Okay. We can't rule on it until we have that. Well, yeah. So... You get the letter, then you call Wanda. We'll put you back on the agenda. Okay. And the important we things the to me. No, no, no we can't. Because end. they're coming back so in. We establish the grade. So that's, that's what? So you can establish the grade, what the straight, yeah, where yeah. the straight line is going to go for the top of it. And how far back you think the fill is going to go? No, well, the last time I thought back in. Yeah. No, the fill. Yeah, we can measure that. We don't want that flat. It's a nice picture. Yeah, that is a nice picture. With staples? You either need to continue to later date, like maybe October, and then if it changes. I think they could have the letter in two weeks if you'd like to come back. I would think Jimmy can do a letter with two weeks from now. Every time I call him, he gets right back to me. So you, you can have him call me or contact me too. You oh, still need a continuation. Because um, I've been I've been taking notes, so I'll be able to tell him exactly what the condition is. Just I make a motion to continue to August fifteenth at. Uh, I have seven forty-five. At seven forty-five. Alternatively, you won't be here. You won't be here. Uh, scratch that. I make a motion to continue to September. September 5th, 5th at, yeah. at 7 p.m. 7 p.m. You're not going to lose any time. Second. Yeah. Well, at the same all those in favor? He could, also, uh, he could also watch the, the video online <coughs> this meeting. <laughs> Get it right from the horse's mouth, you know? All those in favor? Aye. 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 So okay. Here you go. I almost called for the vote yeah. on you. No way. <laughs> you can switch chairs. Have a good night. Thank you. Thanks. <clears throat> Make a motion to continue Merrill Ponds to August 15th at 7.15 p.m. Wait a second. I have a few things to say on that. Um, the issue the last time, one of the big issues was the dry hydrant for um, the fire department. Because And so Sunday night I emailed the fire department, and, um, Mr. Belsito, and he got back to me and he said they fill the fire truck frequently from Welch Pond. And so I emailed him back and I said they had talked about the dry hydrant at Adams Pond. And they also said something about um, putting parking spaces there too. So. I kind of had a suggestion that maybe we could condition them to do that first before they did the other part. So that's that's where you got the idea with that because it was it was kind of my suggestion back to Mr. Belsito and he liked the idea. So it's parking spaces so they could get the fire truck off the road. Mm -hmm. and sort of yeah, and they could get it off the road and and, and people could go fishing there. So mm -hmm. if they did that before they. Did, oh. On, Did the, the other on the same thing that you have thinking, I think we should also add a condition to it that they don't start that project until they finish the right. Singletary project because their argument is, is that's just as useful, which I don't think uh, it is. I agree with everyone, but because they asked us to continue, I don't think we can talk about this in a public. Well, that's uh, that's why I just mentioned that while I brought it up, when, when we brought this up. But I'm just telling you that I emailed Mr. Belsito. So and he's aware. He's so he's aware. So, yeah, we can't discuss anything else until they come back in. Okay. I have a stupid question. Mm -hmm. 
There's a fire department do when the lakes are frozen. Chop a hole. Mm-hmm. Chains are a hole. No stupid question. Just stupid people. <laughs> Thanks. Second. All those in favor? Aye. I had a wildlife professor in college. He started the semester off by saying, "Yes, there are stupid questions." And he had, we had, there was hardly ever a question asked that semester. Nobody, Wanda, what, what did you have a time? You didn't have a time for that. Uh, to 7:15 p.m. John McDonald, he was the black deer and then later on the, wi- the white-tailed deer biologist for uh, oh, you know it's, oh, the okay. Fish and Wildlife. I think that's right. Yep. Good job, you've caught up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Come to these more often for, for your should have joined us last relief, week. comic relief. Me. Yeah. All right, the next one also needs to be continued, I believe. Oh, uh, do we have to wait? No. Oh, it's a... Make a motion to waive the reading of 315 Central Turnpike. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Is here? No. No. I, I, have, I have not received any new materials from them. Haven't heard a peep from them. I was waiting for them to come in here and hand everything out right now and then you know, gently educate them about getting them stuff in a week ahead of time and to email me and call me and stay in touch with me as we go along. Please don't be gentle. <laughs> I, I sent the uh, agenda to them. Should we, get, should we table it till the end of the meeting? Just in case they um, I have a comment about this too because when I was emailing Mr. Belsito I, I uh, emailed Matt Stencil from DPW. He was in here yesterday looking at plans and stuff. He was not aware that um, the replication area was proposed for in the roadway of the town. Yeah, that, that's a question that I had. And that, that was kosher. Oh, they also don't have a DEP number, so. You should have a thing there. There's no DEP number here? Yeah, there is. Okay, it was the other one that here. didn't, Griggs Road didn't, I mean. Uh, here, this is from the highway. Okay, here's the. Gilmore here's some doesn't have one yet. Gilmore, right. I, ch- I checked that this morning. Uh, here's, here's what he did the project review form. The replicated wetlands are shown on town property. Please put them on the 315 Central Pike property. Central Pike property. He, he wants it out of the roadway? He wants it out of the roadway. That makes sense to me. I don't blame him. So that's my comment on that. I was, I was wondering about that to begin with, too. So you want to table it to the end of the meeting? I, the door just opened. Yeah. So. You were here for that, right? Yeah. 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 It's left with Rob. Okay. You got, you t- did you table it? Well, I heard a door open yeah. in about 10 seconds. Sometime. Make a motion to table 315 Central Turnpike in the meeting. Is it second? Yeah, if they don't show up. All those in favor? Oh, All right. right. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, well, we have to close that at the end of the meeting now. No. no just continue it. Yeah, just continue it. Give the second. Andy. Good job. Notice the uh, property sign. They had it for sale for so long. It disappeared. Now they want to put a house there. Okay, um, I don't think. All right, hold that file up there. Oh. Okay, we've got 10 it's minutes. Be sitting around for a little longer. Roger, go get Um. Minutes? Yeah, we've, we can do project updates on 80. Well, they're not. Are they coming in? Okay, the minutes so you we need. Wait on 85 because it is a new filing. Yeah. So. Make a motion to accept the minutes of August. No, no, we Ooh. have we table the minutes. We have to table the minutes. <laughs> it says table to August 1st. That's today. Yeah, I'm she sorry. meant 15th. Five on there. One sorry five. about that. I have not been able to finish that. <laughs> <laughs> You're allowed to make a mistake. 
Okay. Did you say August 15th? Make a motion to table the minutes to August 15th. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, bylaw fee update. I emailed you some information mm -hmm. and I found out that we don't have to go to town meeting because the last time we did the bylaw, we set up the fees mm -hmm. and the rules and regulations, which we just have to hold a public meeting on. So I will, I've been working on comparisons with other towns and I will email you the information and then when we find out if we can do it within a meeting or have to do a separate thing, um, we'll, we'll continue doing that. But I will email you the information and then we will have to hold any comments or anything till we have a meeting. Uh, Nine Harbach Road is requesting a certificate of compliance. Yeah, is that the one was here a couple weeks ago? The, the yes. Building across from Heritage? Right. What? That was the recuse. Did we get what we asked for? I don't think we did. No. I think he sent a, an email, but it wasn't very memorable. Mm -hmm. So I think it was still. Waiting pattern for them. Yeah, I read it was just what they had presented at the meeting and the plan that came in the email. It wasn't any change. It wasn't that? anything answering. Right. I, I don't remember them answering anything on it. I'm wondering why they even sent it. What was the issue? It was a filtered uh, storm drain or something, right? It was the, the oil, oil the filter thing. The oil filter thing in there. Yeah. 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 But, but also detail on the berm. Yeah. Other issues with you know the detail of the as built plan just being very generalized and not, not very specific in their their answers to uh, the uh, as built the as built were, were very generalized and not specific enough for commission satisfaction. So I remember that guy that Bob especially laid it out for the guy who stood stayed for the entire meeting last time. And he said he understood he got it. He's going back to the drawing board, and I don't think we've got anything yet. It did provide a drawing. Was, was it enough? No, I'm going to say it provided a drawing with a cross section of the berm. They don't tell you what the berm is made of, other than rip wrap berm detail. It's uh, three feet high, it's got a uh, six foot top on it, nine foot slope on the back, and a six foot slope on the front. Well, he sent the logs, the, uh... And then he was going to send the logs, and then... Sent the logs, um... And... You got a detail of that the berm? It is a berm detail. Why do I not remember getting this? The thing that... Thing that I didn't mention before yep. was that whole recirculating system pad, the okay. wash pad. Okay. The original drawings, I think, said the design was to be determined. Okay. And whether or not we want to know what they actually put in there for a rewash pad, a holding tank. How they recirculate the water or anything else? Uh, <coughs> see how it does all fall within the. Uh, it's to be determined and designed by others. We need details because we've learned that lesson. <laughs> I believe that's what the original drawings said. Uh, don't know what's been installed. And yeah, I, the response on this this has been poor, in my opinion. And we sh the commission shouldn't have to be. Doing this much legwork. Um, they probably need another inspection too to make sure. I'd, I'd suggest they want to urge them to come to the next meeting, have someone talk to us, have a conversation instead of everyone here having to try to figure out what they mean. Um, as a matter of fact, he was coming to the meeting. He was? Yeah, I've got it written here. What time? Be here. I told him after 8 30. Oh, okay, then we'll talk about it after 8.30. So we can move that back to 8.30 after the other two that we do. 
Okay, 21 Uxbridge Road. I went there and they put in the new septic system and grass was growing pretty well. Um, but when we had that four inches of rain, there was a sluice way in the back and they had the mulch filled wattle with silt fence behind it. And it's a good thing because it overtopped that and the silt fence caught it. So I told them they needed to take that out, fix it and call back when the grass was two inches tall. Which one is this? 21? 21 Oxford Road. I'm trying to remember which one that is. It's the one right over here. Um, Martina Kings. Kings, yeah. Yeah, he doesn't know that. But the one I mean. that has the yard sale every Saturday. Yeah, well, he doesn't know that either. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know much. No. Like three houses up here on the three left. Three houses down, three doors down. Kind of parallel to Mr. Romeo's new house. That's the one, That's right not the one with the septic system. Um, yes, yeah. the, the septic system. The one for the septic right. system. Right. The, and they're asking for a COC already? Yes. I mean, the, the grass can't be growing yet. The, the grass was growing pretty well because it rained pretty, you know, right afterwards. But right on the top of the septic system, uh, it washed out. So. Well, yeah, you could put up some. And they were out there watering it, and so the grass did grow pretty well, but it's, uh, yeah, it, I'm, it I'm is kind of quick. So fast. That's right. Good for them. <laughs> yes. Set the example. So <laughs> until that washout is fixed, we can't give them a COC. You told them, though. They know. Yes, okay. I did. Um, and the rest of these, I guess we haven't gotten any responses to these letters. No. The two have not come back on uh, 13 and 15, so I have not received any information from either of them. One went to Texas, one went to Pennsylvania. So it might be another week or two before we hear anything. And no. you said Mr. Um, John Burns requested a certificate of compliance for 10 Partridge Hill, but. He requested that a long time ago. Right, and we still need we still need to see if she's put the mm -hmm. wetland signs back in the right place yeah, before we can before we can issue the certificate of compliance. I know with the open order we can just go during normal hours, but I I, I would suggest that we we sent a letter saying for her to let us know when okay, we would like right. to, when she would like us to come yeah. and do the inspection. Yeah, technically, we can just go. Yeah, I prefer we In this case, not. being kind of sensitive. Yes, we, we sent that letter out so last week. Okay, um, we have 8 p.m., but we'll use uh, here for 7.45. Should we, so you weren't here, so we tabled it to uh, the end of the meeting, but it, he's here, so we'll, we'll take you now for. No, no, he's no, one no, of the no, neighbors. No, no, no. He's oh. not. Okay, he's not, he's, all right. Travis is for 8 o'clock. Is, is there anybody here for, for 315 Central Park? No. No, he hasn't come in yet. Okay, then we'll do it at 8 o'clock. So 8 o'clock, we want 85 Gilmore Drive. Anybody here for 85 they're Gilmore they're Drive? Not, they're not for Central Park. Yeah, Travis is. I guess the guy didn't show up. Did I give you the I'll go get him.
Make a motion to uh, no. waive the reading of 85 Gilmore. I think it's new. Uh, no, you can't do that. It's new. I thought it was. It's brand new. It is a new one? I thought it was okay. brand new. has to be ready. Okay. I'm I apologize. I thought okay, we need, the, uh, we need the file, Wanda. Okay, 85 Gilmore Drive, Sutton, Mass. The Sutton Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, August 1st, 2018 at 8 p.m. at the Sutton Town Hall, Forks Ridge Road, Sutton, Mass. The purpose of this hearing is to review a notice of intent submitted to the Conservation Commission by Kane Rivera, LLC, Boston, Mass. The project consists of construction of a 140,000 square foot manufacturing facility with a $40,000 square foot office associated grading and utilities on map 45 parcel 68 on 85 Gilmore Drive Sutton Mass this notice is publicized in accordance with the provisions of general law chapter 131 section 40 commonly known as the wetlands protection act and the Sutton wetlands protection bylaw good evening good evening uh, would you like me to talk to the microphone okay um, my name is Mike Domenico I'm with King Street Properties we're the developer for the project uh, just to give you a, a little bit of a background, we're a local Boston-based developer, uh, and we specialize in providing spaces for place science and manufacturing companies. So we're excited to be working with uh, Prime Metals on this project. And just to give you a little quick background on Prime Metals as a company, uh, they've been in existence for about 100 years, and they make the parts and pieces that steel mills use to produce steel. So they're a relatively light manufacturing company, um, their process involves basically CNC machines and routing out pieces of metal. Um, you know, they don't have a lot of waste, a lot of exhaust. They're a very light user, and uh, they even only have about uh, five to ten trucks a day, and a lot of those are FedEx trucks. So uh, pretty light use for this area. We're excited to be working with them. Um, they're a great company, and I know that the town is excited to have them. I know that um, our civil engineers at Andrews Engineering have been um, working with the team and going back and forth with the design. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Travis, who's going to walk you through the site plan and uh, describe the project in a little further detail. Uh, before you start, do you, have you passed in the abutters notification yeah, forms? Yes. You have them? I know your fees are paid? Yes. Uh, do you have any applications with other boards currently? Yes, we have applications in with the planning board for a special permit for the 146 overlay district. Um, we have a normal special permit in as well, and site plan approval. Uh, we were before them on Monday night, and that, um, that hearing got continued to Monday the 13th. Any issues with the Board of Health or Appeal Board? Nothing? Nope. No. Um, you don't have a DEP number. So this will have to be continued until you get a number. Yep. Okay. Uh, and I look for your resume, Travis. Didn't find it. I oh, didn't find it. Yes. Please. For the record, Travis Brown with Andrew Survey and Engineering um, here. Also is Dave Crossman of BNC Associates who did the wetland flagging. Um, this colored rendering in front of you uh, depicts the property Gilmore Drive, which is Sutton Commerce Park is here. Uh, this is the last kind of lot uh, on the project that hasn't been developed. Uh, so we're looking to put a manufacturing building in, as Mike had described, in a two-story office building. Um, we push this as far forward as we can to comply with zoning, um, provide truck access maneuverability, uh, employee parking, 
that uh, is in the front of this building and also extends over here, back here. As you can see, there's four uh, wetland areas. There's a wetland area here, there's a wetland area here, there's a larger area that's part of a BBW in the back, and then there's a small wetland area here. Um, so all of our work that we have shown is outside of the 25 foot buffer zone. Um, we've provided a couple different plans as part of the plan set. Um, we first provided a plan that shows um, some invasive species. Now a lot of these invasive species are in fact outside of the 100 foot buffer zone. Um, there's an area in here along the property line. Uh, this is a property line with NEDT here. Those invasives um, is part of mitigation for the tree cutting within the buffer zone. Um, we would use, eradicate those species, use that as a form of mitigation. Those are, where are they? What's that? Where are so they're along this entire property line. This is the 100 foot buffer here. So there's an area basically between the 100 foot and the 50 foot buffer along that property line. But that's all within your construction anyhow. That's all within your, your work area. There's gonna be parking lots. So you, right. you gotta take them out anyhow. So. Hard to call it mitigation. Right. Okay. Okay. So we provided a second sheet showing a close up we called it a planting mitigation and planting plan. So these are those wetland areas. Uh, the orange is the 25 foot buffer. This inner pink would be the 50, and the outer pink would be the 100 foot buffer. For stormwater purposes, um, we have mostly done underground infiltration here. We do have this one infiltration area in the back. Again, all that work is outside of the 25 foot uh, buffer zone. Um, a lot of it is outside of that 50 foot. So this basin here takes uh, discharge from the roof. The roof drain would go to that. Um, would have a drawdown device that would slowly uh, allow discharge into that wetland. And we would have a couple of spillways, um, an emergency spillway and then a spillway that would control the 100 year storm uh, there. So there are two potential vernal pools that David flagged when he was out here. The first one would be this area. Um, the second one would be this area. So discharging to this area, we have a catch basin into a um, hydro guard separator unit provides TSS removal uh, before discharge. Um, so we've received comments from Jeff Walsh for engineering for the planning board. One of his comments was to look at the hydrology to these vernal pools, which we have done. Uh, there is an increase in hydrology to both of these, uh, more so on this one because of this discharge. Uh, there's a slight increase in the one and two year storms in peak rate and volume. Um, there's a minor increase at this area back here. We provided uh, plantings from the in initial submission of this plan. We have added a number of different plantings. We total 92 that you can see on this plan. A lot of those are at the bottom of this retaining wall here and then in and around that basin along the 25 foot buffer zone at the toe of the slope until this point at the 100 foot buffer. So these vernal pools are not mapped. Um, again, they were flagged uh, when Dave was out there. So we're thinking of, because we're changing hydrology to look at those maybe for a year or two um, to evaluate them, whether they're potentially certifiable or um, you know if they function as a vernal pool. So I guess as part of the mitigation, we would request that you know that be considered as part of that mitigation if we were to look at those areas in conjunction with uh, the number of plantings that we propose again, which is 92. Of those plantings, it's mostly uh, shrubs, just given the general lack of space. Um, those species uh, I had sent to Brandon, they're indigenous to this area. Um, I think they fit well. They provide habitat value, forage uh, for birds and things like that. So that's what we have provided and I'd be happy to take any questions from the future. Um, Brandon, you have comments? <clears throat> yeah, I've, I've been emailing back and forth with Travis um, quite a bit. He's, he's good about that. 
things we talked about. Things we talked about. Um, let's might as well start with the potential ground pools. Okay. PVP is, doesn't have the same regulatory weight as a certified rental pool, a CVP, but it may still have valuable wildlife habitat, and uh, you can regulate it under the bylaw. Uh, that said, um, there's nothing that's, uh, under the Wetlands Protection Act. There's no if, if the work being is being done in upland buffer zone, the protective area around the vernal pool under the Wetlands Protection Act does not extend beyond that of the wetland resource area. So it stops at the edge of the BMW. Okay. Under the bylaw, uh, protective area, however you deem fit, goes into the, the adjacent upland resource area, which is the upland buffer zone. So when we had the uh, department head meeting well, three weeks ago, one of the comments was to make sure that all disturbance is at least 25 feet away because that's the standard the commission has been, been going on. They've made that just you know, very close, shape, close shave in a few places, uh, but they have met it. Um, the commission, if you deem that these areas require more protection because it's a, a, uh, next to a potential vernal pool, you have that prerogative. I do like the idea of mitigation involving a study of these areas. I, I would propose any area on site, not just the areas right around the building in the parking lot and the stormwater structures. Uh, potentially certify the vertebrates with the Natural Heritage and Endangered Species Program, but also perform a three-year study to show, uh, A, well, they it might not be a functioning vernal pool this year, but it might be the, you know, the year after. Vernal pools have a tendency to be active one year, not the next. The important thing is that vernal pools are, you know, they, they hold water in most years, which is defined as three out of five. So this is where, that's where the three-year study comes from, what I'm recommending to see if we can certify it, and number two, to see if there's any uh, detrimental impact from uh, the site design and, and stormwater, because we're gonna be, it looks like they're gonna be slightly adding stormwater, which is, it's better to add a little bit of water than to take it away from a pool, right? So then the question becomes, well, are there gonna be any water quality, negative water quality impacts because of the discharge from the stormwater structure. And I think that's that would be good to have a study. So I'm glad to hear that they're willing to, to play ball on that. Uh, the other form of medical, well, there's two forms of mitigation. Bob's already alluded to. A lot of the invasive species eradication is already in the areas that is gonna be covered by building or parking lot or stormwater structure. And a lot of it is, is outside of the AWRA which the commission has already established back when they were building the houses uh, uh, along Manchug Road on Manchug Pond that uh, doing work outside of jurisdictional areas cannot count as mitigation. Mitigation can only be counted if it's within a jur jurisdictional area. And uh, planting trees and shrubs in the forest is redundant and unnecessary. And the other thing they've done is they've proposed quite a bit of plantings, uh, again, mostly shrubs, as they say, in the AWRA and buffer zone. Uh, I made comments on some of those, as whether or not they're indigenous or even you know, native to the area. Uh, I'm getting a response as far as that's concerned. And the question is, is that enough? And that's, that's up to you. Well, I have to apologize. I was going to send you a list of native plants, and I can't find the book anyway. <laughs> okay. well, my, my, my recommendation is to keep the plantings pretty simple. I, I see a lot of, you know, I can tell that the, the plant was created by a landscape yes. designer. It's yes. pretty the fancy. Names. Yeah, and a lot, lot of cultivars. Yeah. And there's one a hydrangea that I, I looked up. It doesn't go up any further than, I think, North Carolina and its range. And I don't know about that, so 
I, I just prefer to keep it simple, stupid, with, with your indigenous, you know, plantings. Maybe if I find that book, I can... Uh, it, we're happy to keep it simple. Yeah. It's a book yeah. from the uh, Audubon Society, and it's got a whole list of Northeast indigenous mm -hmm. plants and so forth, and if I find it, I will send it to you. Yeah, just for clarification, there was two plans done, one by a landscape architect that did the plantings kind of within the site, and then there's the planting plan that's here that we did more for conservation purposes in and around the basin that provide better species, I think, than that plan that the landscape. Is that the one you just you just did a revision on? Yes, it is. What, what's the date on that? What, what sheet is it? Uh, sheet 8.2. I mean, I can run down the species, too, if it's not helpful. Well, you don't need to now, because you're coming back anyway. Okay. I guess we can discuss it here. I'm satisfied with those. As long as they're native. As long as they're native, but we can clarify that. We it's, don't have to. That's that. like a gravel pit where this is going as well, right? There's not a ton of... No, well, no. Th this, this end, that end does go into the woods. Oh, it does, okay. Right, so one of the things I, I said to Travis in the, in the email is that, you know, one of the things the commission does sometimes in order to try to quantify what the impact is going to be is to do a count on the, the trees that are five inches in diameter or greater. But I think your answer, Travis, was it's a lot. Yeah, I mean, it's it's hard to say. It's a tough thing to count accurately, for one. Um, you know, Dave's been back there a couple times. I've been back there myself. But there probably is a reasonable amount, but there are a lot of smaller trees, too. What's reasonable? Dale, Dale. Dale, speak. You just got to identify. Yeah, yourself. you got to identify yourself. Uh, Dale King, I'm just wondering where they're going to be building. Are they going to build where the, the gravel area is, or are they going in where the trees are? A little bit of both. A little bit of both. Yes. You're buying the whole piece of land? Uh, we're using a portion of this property, so there's a property line that will run here. So we'll be building in this area here. Okay, did you have, uh, Travis, do you have the, the plot plan to kind of show that? Because I think that's just an important thing to understand. For, for, for this project, we're, we don't control all of the other land that's shown on this side of the plan here. So the lot line that we control as part of this project is limited to this area that you can see. It's this outline, right? That's the extent of it. How's okay. that turn around? Here's what we're going to do. Ready? Moving around. Oh, where is it? Never mind. We'll come back to it. How is that turn around going up past the property line? Uh, so there's going to be an easement there. Okay. All right. Yeah. Just truck, truck easement. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Travis, go up there and trace it with your fingers. Approximately. <laughs> <laughs> Plus or minus on it. Start right there. <laughs> yeah, so it's actually going to come up from here. Yeah. That's fine. And then where it's going to go? So, probably to here. Yeah. Let's see. To here. <laughs> to there. Where's the buildable area going to be? Is what okay, I want. yeah, so if you stop, stop here. All right, there. And then back, back to here. Right, more or less like that? Yep. And then along this property line. Right. You may not go back that far either. That may be further than. Well, tell me, tell me, because I'm going to create a, rent, a, a rendering on the aerial that'll give the commission a decent idea. Yeah, that's pretty close. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so it might be cut off in this corner. That's the only. So let me let me, let me build, try, build let me area. try again. Yeah. That was the buildable area lines up with see how this lot line comes yeah, down so like that. So it kind of lines up. So start yeah, start again. Base is good. <laughs> Do it with one foot this time. <laughs> All right.
sí. Looks like looks like it's oriented a different direction. <coughs> oriented yeah, most so of this point. Oh yeah, 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 right, yeah. This is oriented like, like yeah. this. Right. That, yeah. So now it's now it's up uh, also. Flip the TV next time. So the, <laughs> the wood line, the wood line is more or less like about the back end of these boulders, right? Yeah. So there's two different things. There's a brush line that's out in here, which is a bunch of smaller. Uh, undergrowth, and then the mature tree line is really back here, so you can kind of see the limits of that. So what do you think the brush line is? I think the brush line goes to about here, to here. Here? Yeah. And then there's a swath up through there that's brush, and then this would be the mature area. Keep, keep on going. The I brush line? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, here. Here. your brush line right there. Okay. <coughs> so, so we get this area in here. All right. So let me let me do a quick count. All right. This is this is all very general. All of its jurisdictional? No, it's not. The 1.8 acres? No. Okay. 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 What area do you think would be jurisdictional? I think when I did a quick number, I think it was around 53,000 or 55,000 square feet. So I don't think it's very One and a quarter acres? That would be. So an acre is about what, 206 by 206, 200 feet by 200 feet. So 43,560, which is about 206 point something by 206 point something. Doesn't have to be square though. Moving right along. So how many plants are you proposing? 92. And mostly shrubs? Mostly shrubs. So and that would account for about 45 trees if you do two shrubs per. Right. And vernal certification with along with a, a three-year study, which I guess Mr. Crossman would be responsible for. Yes. Mm -hmm. And any invasive species in the 100-foot buffer zone AWRA as opposed to outside and eventually under parking lot and building? Tell you identify yourself. The woods itself is remarkably free of invasives. Yeah. Considering how much is growing in the gravel pit, right. um, you would have. I, mean, I would have expected to see a bit of buckthorn in those uh, wet areas because transition. one of them was dug out. It looks like and there's a couple others that were altered. Um, but there's no. I didn't really find any buckthorn. Uh, you know, there's like a, one plant here, another plant way somewhere else, and you just have to stumble upon it. There isn't a, a large clump like there is 
and the gravel hit this huge areas of uh, autumn olive and some bittersweet phragmites growing up in there. But in, the woods are really clean, considering that they're next to an area that's been worked over so much. So I, it's, we can't really say that we're doing any invasive cleanup in the woods. I guess the only area today would be along that property line to NEDT where there was autumn olive that went back into here. And there's an area that we're not disturbing, fairly small, but some of those invasive species went back into that yeah. 100 foot buffer zone that we can certainly look at. Well, that would be probably the only area in the buffer zone that would have the invasives. <coughs> Comments? I have a couple of questions, I guess. You pointed out the property line there. It runs parallel to the road. Now, I know it's not the whole way, but if you, there is a portion of that property line that goes in the buffer zone at the top, correct? There is. Yet you're doing work outside the property line, so this sort of conditions wouldn't encompass the work outside the property line. I guess I'm not right, sure right, what you mean right. because the property line is outside of any of our work. Yeah, but right where your pencil right is here. there. Yeah, there's okay, grading right shown in the drawing, and that's within the buffer zone. On property you don't control. So right in the oh. Does the easement, do you have an easement in getting an easement for the turnaround? Does that include yeah. that? I, I don't yeah. know how that road, that whole road we, system works or what that, what's happening, but it's just that the, there's work being done outside the property line all the way down, but the only thing that falls in our jurisdiction is the, the small portion that's up at the top. Right, we would, we would need to get a, um, a construction easement from the neighboring landowner to be able to construct this slope. And I don't know how that works in the order of condition. So as it is now, this is one piece of property. This is not been split. I understand, but the, it will be split. The order of conditions that you're asking for is for your property and not anybody else's property. So there is work being done within the buffer zone on adjoining property. And I'm just yeah, because if, it, if it's all the same property now and it's going to remain the same, same <coughs> property while you build in, in this footprint, then, then I suppose that would be okay. But That's if it's getting going. subdivided, if it's getting subdivided before the work is finished, that well, could be problematic. I'm sure they're buying the land before they, they spend right. yeah. money on developing. It, yeah, it will be subdivided before the work starts. It needs to be subdivided for us to purchase it. Yeah, that, you, that, that's a good point. That is kind of problematic. So you can't move your pr property line over to include the... Yeah, at this point, uh, are the property lines malleable? Yeah, they are. But that could be, that could solve your problem. Yeah, we would need to, uh, we just need to address that with the seller. The... I would, I would have a question. I guess so. If if you're ever if you're doing work outside of the property line as a sort of means and methods to get the work complete inside the property line, does the order of conditions not expand onto that? Correct. Okay. The order of conditions is only valid for that parcel of land, and, and cannot be. You, you can't give an order of conditions a permit. For someone else to do work on another person's land. That's just basic property rights right there. On the east portion of the site, Travis, uh, I know it's not in our jurisdiction as such, but there's, there's shown a one to one slope that is subject to eroding and causing problems someplace. So I'm saying that that is within my purview to ask how you're treating that slope and how you're going to prevent the erosion on that 
when yeah, it there's a slope stabilization product that we're using uh, called GeoWeb that we've submitted to the planning board. I'd be happy to supply that to the Conservation Commission. What is too. GeoWeb? It is a grid that they place on that and they fill it in with soil and then that will ultimately be I, seeded. I, oh, I know what that is. Okay. I'd be oh. happy to provide that spec and it's been reviewed. It'd be interesting just to see because yeah. the parent material out there is not the but sand, the loose sand, so it has got no inherent. Coagulation. It will all move real quick. Um, again, it's, I noticed the snow remove our snow storage areas. There's some conflicts in areas with your landscaping, so I don't know whether your landscaping is killed every year or whether your snow storage doesn't take place there, but there, there appears to be some conflict. There. Along the building, also on the cul de sac area. That one to one slope you were just talking about, is that on their per, uh, prospective property or is that on the other property? It's not somebody else's property. Yeah. It's partly on, on both properties. The yeah, majority of it's on, the else, on somebody else's property. But again, it, it's a slope that has to be protected and has to be addressed some way, I think. Um, I know you've, you've done the, the studies, but it just seems, you know, from a practical standpoint, that you got a 140,000 square foot area on the roof, and a good portion of that water is going to a little tiny detention basin on the, the west side of the site. I assume there's some going to the recharge on the east side. I, I see the line coming from the building, but I don't know what proportion goes where. But I assume Graves has looked at that and, and uh, felt it was... They have. So what we have done is split the building. So the back half of that roof would go to that basin in the rear, and this front portion would go to this underground infiltration. Just seems like, you know, from a practical standpoint, looking at 140,000 square foot, three-inch rainstorm all ending up in a, a recharge area that that one there in particular just pukes out onto that one-to-one -one slope and I, I, you know the intent of the overflow on those recharge as you all know is that if there's more water in the system than it can handle it, it pukes out mm -hmm. so to puke that out onto an unprotected slope and running down the side of the road just seems to me that it could be a problem. I yeah, don't it's, know. It's not our jurisdiction, I understand, other than the road I mean, I'm happy to answer your questions, too. Um, there's very little discharge in the 100-year storm because of that slope. We didn't want to discharge um, okay. an amount that would cause erosion on that slope. Green is, roof. Is, is, is a technical stormwater term? <laughs> <laughs> right. It's recognized throughout the industry. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. My green roof. It's not happening. <laughs> the building won't support it. <laughs> okay, I think you have some. Anybody else have comments? Uh, just a quick question: Was is Gilmore Drive on public utility? Yes, it's public. Okay. All right, public sewer. Public water. I guess you have some homework to do and look at a few things. Uh, I don't know. I, th I think for me, the one big issue is that property line. And yeah, I apologize. I should have noticed that. That's, that's, a, that's a big issue. Um, the mitigation so far is, is I think, decent. I don't know if it's Right there, especially with the fact it's a acre and a quarter of, of forest. Um, with that being said, this is the area of town that this kind of project is supposed to be proposed. So I think that there should be some recognition of that fact. Anything else, Bob? That's quickly looking at it. When would you like to continue to? Next available meeting? 
make a motion to continue to September. Uh, sorry, August fifteenth at eight p.m. Seven forty-five. Seven forty-five. Seven forty-five. Second. All those in favor? Go ahead. Aye. Aye. I will not be here. I'm on vacation that week. So Travis knows, and he's he's very good at this at getting all plan change plans in in a timely fashion. So everyone. Yeah, so so if you get any stuff before the end of next weekend, uh, and before next weekend, good chance I can look at it and make some kind of comment before the meeting. That'd be great. That would be the okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. <coughs> um, let's see. Is there anyone here for eighty West Province Turnpike? did a plan for uh, helping to repair the washouts from the rain there. Correct. Uh, I'm Dan Hazen mm -hmm. from Gary Irvin, now normal. Uh, after the July 17th rainstorm, three inches of rain, um, a section of the bottom of the swale, I believe, where the uh, interface between a flat end section that collects drainage from over in the driveway area and the swale came down and I think the increase in the volume of and just the velocity picked up some of the four to six inch riprap and carried it down to where the soap fence was. Um, yes. I brought some smaller plans the commission would like those. Sure. swale leading down to the riprap swale and the riprap swale itself looked to be in good condition. It was just down at the bottom, like I was saying, that was uh, started to do the velocity of the water coming down the riprap swale and the interface of the, uh, the water coming through the flat end section. What we're proposing to do is to slow down the velocity of the water coming down this riprap swale I believe that you've been out there and seen the water actually flowing on top of the riprap going down. I have. Yeah. yeah. It's caused, it's caused uh, in the middle, flow is going uh, above the elevation of the stones to slide down. Right. So what we're proposing, the stone out there right now is four to six inch riprap, so it's probably around 40 to 50 pounds each. We're looking to, what we're proposing to do is a 12 inch riprap, check dams, four of them, spaced out, and the last one being just above that flat end section. Uh, 12 inch riprap, 18 inches high, foot at the top, two feet at the bottom, and then face the front of that with four to six inch riprap so that it'll create, you know, it'll give more surface area to slow down the water. The swale itself is two to three feet deep, so it'll still have enough room to go over the check dams, but it'll be enough of a barrier to slow down the water. At the base, where there was the inter where the uh, riprap stopped, and where there was some scouring from where the water went down, and scoured out some of the uh, vegetation at the bottom on the uh, up upland side of the uh, soap fence. We're looking to propose a uh, stilling basin. Basically, it's a depression. It'll be lined with filter fabric, 12 inch minus riprap placed on top of that, and it'll allow for a foot of freeboard. 
so that basically the water will come down, have a place to settle out a little bit, and then go over. And that's still outside of the, uh, it'll be about 32 feet away from the wetlands, and it's in the, uh, still in the, within the tree line. Will the lower end of that uh, silly basin act like a level spreader so it's not concentrated in any one particular point? It'll be a little bit wider, but it's, it's there won't be a, uh, an actual concrete meter or anything there. Mm -hmm. So you still might get a little bit of channelization, but it, it's, um, it'll be flat, so it'll, it will, in effect, act as a level spreader. Would this be a minor field change? Would it be an amendment? That's what would it be? You. I think this is all necessary. Yes. So I don't know how hard of time you want to give them. They're cooperating. I don't want to give anybody that's cooperating. Right. Thank you. So. Tell, tell the Rehoboth Conservation Commission that last Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to happen. Um, so this would be a minor field change sort of at our request. Okay. I mean, we can have a, I know they're excited to get moving on this so that they can get their civilian compliance wrapped up. Um, so. Personally, I would like to see if it works first before we give you a certificate of compliance. Um, what level of storm do you want to see? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want a repeat of last Tuesday, that's uh -huh. two days ago. Yeah, well, those those happen frequently now. Yeah, I think you might have to go through one of those storms to see. Like a year or so. Who knows? It could happen a week after it's built. You never know. So I, I don't recommend giving carte blanche without seeing how it operates. Uh, we had four inches of rain a week and a half ago, and then we had another three inches a couple of days later. So, you know, these hundred-year storms happen monthly now. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think you can, no, no delay in being able to build. No, no, no. no. Okay. Yeah. So go start tomorrow. Okay. Make a motion to issue a minor field change as described. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thanks for coming in. I just wonder where the water is going. And where we're supposed to be going. It was supposed to be in the bottom of the swale and then just spreading out and, and infiltrating into the ground and now what we found out is that it actually blows right through here into the wetland hangs uh, it does a right hand turn right here and then goes through the, right through the middle of the wetland well half of it goes this way into the here and then half of it swings down into the middle of the wetland replication area So there's a stream that comes right, right through, you know, this area here. Correct. Oops, what did I do? So did that stream go down to 146? It go under it 146? Yeah. By um, Mountain Burns Road? No. Uh, back road? Yeah. Does Glenn know about that stream? Hey, you want Glenn to know about your this You're burning time over <laughs> Hopefully this will prevent the uh, channelization and any further scouring of the replication area and then it'll be all set. Get it built more thunderstorms tomorrow, right? It won't be done then. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, good night. Thanks. Good night. <coughs> Okay, so you have a choice that's here. That's up to you. Let's, 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 let's get to the date you would prefer. Right. The next meeting is pretty full. Rather than leave it open, if we close the meeting, then they go home, right? No. 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 They're not here. We can't close. Because it's a no-show. We'll continue. It's a no-show. Right we, we're going to we're gonna continue. We she, that's what she just said. We can continue to whatever we want. So you prefer to go yeah. September 5th. September what? 5th. September 5th at 7.15. 7.15. 7.15. Second. 
All those in favor? Uh, well, Aye. One comment prior to that. Can we... Uh, too late. Too late. <laughs> no, I was going to say, just so folks don't sit here again, can we put it that if they're not here at 715 that we don't table it? Um, Actually, that's, I didn't that's know. Completely discretionary. I had no okay. way of knowing. Oh, that's discretionary? Okay. Oh, always yeah. is. I just, I appreciate the folks sitting here for two hours, so. Yeah, the, the only thing you can't yes, do. Yes, but it was Dale's entertainment. Right. If there is a provision that if you look real deep, if you haven't heard from an applicant in two years, you can close it for lack of information, but generally you can't close it. I don't think it'll go so that one. Too bad. But you can put it so on any next meeting that you prefer. The blue yeah. hole shirt. Yeah. yeah. Nine hot bags, yeah. Oh, that's hot. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you guys are all set. Have a good night. September. Thank you. Pink for the condition. <laughs> well, glad it works down there. Glad it works down there. Well, I need to switch it. Okay. Um. I'll go find your red salamanders. <laughs> I'll go sit in the audience and have a representation. Hey, you were here for nine, Harback. We discussed it when we had time, but uh, you're welcome to come up. Oh, you did. I'm wondering where you were. Joyce. I forget the sign. Maybe he's on You're a good sign, okay. Yeah, I've been only here for a couple of months, so I spent some time with them. I'm Gary Magnuson with CMG Environmental. Um, apologize, Ben Gould was here last meeting. Ben's not as familiar with the project. He is my business partner at our LSP. He really deals with the hazardous waste issues. Um, he's the LSP for the site. I kind of manage the project, so I have some more than the details. So hopefully I can answer any questions you guys have. My understanding is, and correct me if I'm wrong, there were two major concerns. The plan didn't have enough detail specific to uh, runoff, direction of runoff, and confirmation that the um, little, little detention basin, the cool is there, and that the um, oil boom is in place. That is in place. It's been in place the whole time. Um, I actually replaced it about three weeks ago. It's no oil's ever gotten to it. It's all stained with bacteria and other growth, but no oil. Those booms are white, and when they come in contact with oil, they turn black, brown, and it hasn't had any oil on it. But uh, they just deteriorate. You're sitting in the moisture for a period of time. So that is there. I did replace it. There is another boom on site. Um, they had some staff changes at site on site, so I trained the new person that if there's an issue, give me a call or just replace that boom as necessary. Um, I did have the surveyor go back out, put some more spot topos on the plan, put some flow arrows. Um, I thought the questions that were asked last time in regards to the um, riprap swale and this riprap firm up here were, were appropriate. The plan doesn't clearly show um, which direction the surface water would flow. So to clarify, this berm up here was shown originally as just riprap with the intention of the water coming from this area running across over this riprap into the wetland. Well, this project, as you may or may not recall, was a, 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 a reconstruction project we didn't change any grades so the water always flew from flowed from here toward the building and then this way there's no way to get water to flow from here into this wetland unless you come out and dig three to four five feet into the wetland which obviously was never the intent so all we did is when we were doing the project we just put any large stones and created a riprap berm here which acts as a barrier for people to drive pork trucks and other things into the wetlands so that was change, wasn't clear. Hopefully on this it's clear. Um, we did put a cross section in here to generally show you what that is. Could not get in there to get um, elevation shots on that because um, the property owner field protection has their um, field protection mats stored 20 feet high front to back in that area. So you, you just couldn't shoot grades in there for that. So we did give you a, a cross section to show it, but I put some more spot grades on it. More importantly, from your perspective of where does the stormwater flow, we did put the, the flow arrows in here with the spot grades to show where it is flowing. The other question was um, inspection reports. I emailed those to you, and I have hard copies here for you. Logs, yeah, I got the logs. Um, I think those were the key points that I'm I was recalled. So I'll listen. 
I believe Bob had a question on the wash area. No, you're correct on, on the questions that were, were asked okay. earlier. Uh, since then, I have thought of, or I'm asking the question, my recollection was that the wash pad was a design build wash pad. So, and you know. I'm trying to remember if that was a, I don't think it was a design build wash pad we talked about. I think we had the spec in there for a, it's a um, I can't recall off the top of my head now because it's other projects. It's a two or three thousand gallon tank. Um, I think it was the original drawings, and I, I don't know if the. Okay. okay. I can look for this. What? Well, I don't know which one this is. Let's see. I think it was I don't think I have the first set of Oh, that's the new one. And I'm not, I, my recollection that it was stated as such. I might not have that information. This is that the, the original drawings <laughs> that the, the order conditions okay. was written on should be the large set of drawings right there. Right here? I'm guessing. Says recycling system designed by others, but yeah. it does show the the um, the proposed settling tank and everything on the size. If it was built for that size. And you know, as I explained to your colleague, it's not that we're trying to be hard on this. Is this is the headwaters to the Cold Stream Brook down the way that uh, people feel is very, very understood. important. Understood, and exactly. I have no. Did not want to be caught not doing our due diligence uh, or accused of not doing our due diligence. I, I think the point I'd you know, bring up is um, the, the, you know, I'm not a wetlands specialist. That's not what I do. We're, 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 you know, we deal with hazardous waste and site remediation. This was a large hazardous waste site remediation project. Um, I dealt with and worked with you guys, and Brennan's been really good to work with in the commission to, 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 to come to you guys and, and get the order of conditions to do what we needed to do. Um, essentially, the site's put back together to the way it was before, but all the wastes are gone. Um, as I said, the, the best thing that happened in the project is we had originally figured we were going to have to take a lot of waste out of this whole area right along the stream bank. And didn't have to take very much out of there. Um, so the conditions, I, I agree with you that we don't want to do anything to, de to deter or make those that runoff any worse. Um, it's, it certainly appears to be better than it was at this point, and the wastes are gone, and we're not leaching all these heavy metals into the surface water any longer, which is, which is a big concern. Um, but. I agree with you. It, it is a headwater to an important stream. I have a question. That stream, you were going to take out the stone wall and open it up, and you thought it would flow and maybe fish would come back there. Have you seen any evidence of that? Can I make one correction? You guys had asked us to do that. That was not my recommendation. So, um, yes, I think the, the, you guys' idea, I originally didn't think it would do much, but uh, after opening it up, that stream is now um, in a rain event like we had this week. You would have had a large, flat mosquito breeding pool there that was only about six to 10 inches deep and gosh, 100 feet long, 50 feet wide. Yeah. And now it's an, it's an actual stream. Have I seen any fish coming up the stream? No, I haven't spent that much time in there, but it looks healthy. Um, it's got a nice path of flow. It's consistent. Um, it was very little da damage to take that that dam out. I actually thought it was going to be a lot of work, but it was um, it was a farm dam built by a farmer that he didn't put much effort into. So it, it took very little to take it out. And mm -hmm. within six months of taking it out, um, that flooded area kind of you know come back with some vegetation, and it, it, it looks good. I was going to go look at it when I went to Domi's, but um, it was too much stuff in there to get over there. You know I'm trying to look. The site's very active as far as trying to get in there um, during the day. They're, they're, they're busy, but. Um, and you know the stream is completely, you know, overgrown through here, so it's mm. hard to see. But um, 
I don't know if you've seen it. It looks, I think it's an improvement. Oh, where the farm dam came out. Oh, oh that's, that's definitely an improvement. It's everything else that this question's on. Yeah. guy over here on the left has to be happy. I'm here to answer questions. I'm on the right. <laughs> His left, you're right. Yeah. As I said, at this point, the only concern I would have, and you know, if nobody else is concerned about it, and that is the, the uh, recycling water whole system there uh, because that it was you know, to be designed by others and uh, but I mean if the board is happy or satisfied or brand is satisfied uh, uh, that's fine at this point I'm satisfied Bob yes no yeah I'm sorry if everybody else is satisfied with uh, not having that information <coughs> Make a motion to issue a certificate of compliance for Nine Harbor. Nine Harbor Road. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Good to see you. Let me see if I can find what we have to sign. Oh, actually, okay. Oh, okay. Wait, did I print a copy of this? I meant to buy it. Let's see. Yeah, because it was one was twenty six pages, one was ten, and one was thirteen. Did everybody say book with you? Hold on to that a second. No, I want to put it right here. What's that? Two, three, three, three. Even better. That'd be awesome. I heard that. I heard people were going to say, you're going to be, you're going to be, yeah, I heard people say the same thing. I wouldn't. Thank you very much. <laughs> Have a good night. Good night. Yeah. Thank you. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.